So I wanted to clarify about interfacing because a lot of people do not know fashional interfacings. Okay, so in the fashion industry, I went to different interfacing houses that compare fashion interfacings. Some houses, interfacing houses, will have up to a hundred of them. But I needed to narrow it down that you have one for knits, one for jackets, one for lightweight wovens, and one for all-purpose wovens. So I'm going to start with 4420 to show you the one that I found for knits. We ended up calling this a knit interfacing 44. These are my numbers, not the industry numbers. So 4420 ends up getting a, it stretches and relaxes. Now, in selecting those interfacings, I needed to make sure that we had the right fiber, which would be polyester or rayon in it. It would have a amount of glue on the back of it so that you would know how it would adhere to the fabric. Not You cannot select an interfacing by feeling it. It doesn't work. So in looking at 4420, I'm looking at that it has its fusible trico, which means it's a weave. It is not the type of fabric. A trico weave means that it has a knit weave on the weft and on the warp. So when you're looking at a weft, usually it'll be a, a looser weave so that it stretches, and that's what makes it a trico and stretches at the same time. So 4420 is 100% nylon, which means it will not shrink. The industry would never use a cotton or anything that is not polyester or nylon or a little rayon in it. So we're looking at 100% nylon means that it will not shrink. The industry will also never go out in the alley and pre-shrink their interfacings. They will end up making sure that it has nylon, polyester, or a little rayon in it. And the rayon is for softness. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at an interfacing for knits, but when you put a trico, which is what a lot of home sewers have purchased for wovens, it'll stretch your woven and not recover. It has, a knit has to go into a knit. So let me show you an example of a knit. This is our CS1207, which is a knit t-shirt. We have chosen a matching uh, sequin fabric that does stretch. But what the thing is about it is that you don't need interfacing in most knits. There's no interfacing in this garment. It has bias binding that gives a little, and that's why it's bias. And it has everything else that continues to stretch in it. But we have no interfacing in it. Our next one that I'm going to show you is another sequin fabric that also stretches, but we didn't want the yoke area to stretch out. So we did interface this so that it makes sure that it stays stationary when it's in place. I'm going to show you now our non-woven interfacing that I chose because this one is 7927. It is all-purpose polyester. It's 100% polyester, which means it will not shrink. So now we're looking at an interfacing that though, even though it's non-woven, it has a grain, a cross grain, and a full bias to this interfacing. That is because of the way it's manufactured. We have it both in white and in charcoal, so that you can put the charcoal in dark garments and the white in lighter garments. Unfortunately, in the stores, they don't carry this one. They'll carry an interfacing, you'll feel it, and it has the wrong amount of glue in it. As many glues are made with 
large dots and they put these large dots on the interfacing in the homes in the stores because it'll stiffen it. If you press it onto the fabric and see that it's stiffening, then it's the wrong interfacing. So 7927 allows you the correct amount of glue and the correct amount of uh, inner, uh, weight. Uh, interfacing should be an interfacing that works on almost any fabric and works for the garment itself in adding body but not adding a lot of weight but some weight. So we have this one that works very well for it. Okay, this one is a common use of 7927 is it's all purpose so that you can use it in shirtings a lot. And so this shirt has a collar stand and the collar and a placket. So we inserted the interfacing in the placket and the collar. If you want it really stiff, then you would just put it in the top and the under collar at the same time before you sew it together. And it ends up creating a nice shirt feel. It can also be used on almost anything. If you're in doubt, you can use 7927. I've used it in many, many, many places. But you have to make sure that you're following the grain and the cross grain as shown in the previous section so that you know that you still have the grain and the cross grain. You would never take a good non-woven interfacing and just flop it in like we did in the 50s, but now we have to be able to follow grain and cross grain to be able to make sure it manipulates with the garment correctly. For tailoring, you need a good weft interfacing. This one is our 1348 weft. So let me show you what weft is all about. Weft is, again, you must pay attention to the weave. So the weave here is a straight of grain weave on the, with the grain. So that is the uh, warp. And then on the weft, and that's why it's dubbed weft, they put a, tr put a trico weave into it. So that's the looping knit weave, but it doesn't stretch. It still gives you a straight of grain, the cross grain, and the bias, just like you would any fabric. So it is considered a woven interfacing. We have it in charcoal and in white so that you can put, and the most common one that you'll use is your charcoal because most jackets are with charcoal. Now, if you have a silk garment or a rayon garment, you're going to use our next one that we're going to show you, which is 4091. You would not use this because it's too heavy to put into a lightweight fabric, and that also includes linen, too. So let me show you what has happened in the past. Many years ago, we had an interfacing called Armo. Armo looked like this, and it had a, a woolen horsehair blend. But what happened is the company that made Armo went out of business because Weft was so popular and did the same thing more expensively and came up with the same results. So they ended up going out of business. So then I'm in a Joann's store recently and I saw this sample here. Actually, it was several years ago. And I bought a quarter yard of it and I looked at the end of the bolt. You must know your fiber content. With our 1348 weft, the fiber content is polyester rayon. The purpose of the polyester is so that it won't shrink. The rayon is so that it'll give a very soft hand to it to help out with the woolen blends that you may use. So then, as you feel this, you could feel it that it's very soft, but yet it still maintained the weight maintain the shape and add a little body to it. When we look at our imitation Armo, which is what I found at Joann's, it had such hard, big dots of glue, it stiffened it very, very much, and it was a press-on. 
but it was definitely the wrong interfacing. Also, when I looked at the end of the bolt, it said 100% nylon. It did not have a correct uh, blend for it. Then well, another interfacing that they were selling you ladies for a long, long time was called weft insertion. This was a non-woven interfacing with a trico weave on the cross grain. But what it did is it stretched and did not recover and it was very, very cheaply made. So a lot of the home sewing places were selling this calling it weft but it was called really weft insertion and some other people called it many other names one one lady i knew called it uh, a tailoring interfacing and that was wrong too so you need to know your fibers and your content your blends and your and your weaves so that you make sure that you are selecting the correct interfacing so this one was a horrible one that was finally sold out to a lot of people and they quit manufacturing it but every once in a while you'll still find it on an old shelf but that would be the last one and in the garment industry because i was asking the people in the garment industry why they didn't sell this and they said well we dubbed it the cheap man's interfacing or the poor man's interfacing Okay, this is a jacket that we made in the same way that the garment industry makes them, is that they will end up putting the interfacing into the jacket, sometimes even the pocket, which we did here. We did the front jacket, the sleeve, and the back of the jacket. So I'm going to show you block fusing in a few minutes to show you how you can quicken it and how the industry quickens it, but it's in the it's made in the industry method, not the home sewing method. So we have the pleat on the bottom. We have the lining correctly made and that it all turns correctly. And it's really quite easy. One of my future videos will be on tailoring, so you'll be able to see that. We have the co it in the collar and the collar stand and the lapel. And it just fl flows very nicely into a jacket and makes a nice tailored jacket. With 4091, we're going to show you a very lightweight interfacing that uses, that can be used in rayons, silks, linens, another rayon here, and cotton without any problem at all. It is my favorite of all interfacings. This one is again 100% polyester interesting that it has a trico weave but doesn't stretch so it, this one took me a while to find it so that we ended up having a good trico weave without a stretch so as you look at this you end up seeing the weave here the trico weave with straight of grain cross grain and bias again and again we have it in black and white and why i say we is that on our website, we carry all of these interfacings for your convenience. We sell them in two yard packages. This is the close up of 4091 so that you can see the actual weave in it. And again, it's 100% polyester, but does not stretch even though it is a trico weave. To show some uses of this 4091, I put on this nice shirt that's ours also. But uh, we chose a rayon fabric in this, and a rayon batik wrinkles like mad. This interfacing is 100% polyester. So what we did was block fuse it, and I'll show you block fusing after this section. So what we did is we block fused the entire thing, and that included the collar and the lapels and the facing, so that we got a nice flow of the fabric but now my rayon won't wrinkle. And so it ends up being a very good use of this. Again, this is used for lightweight fabrics and I use it in almost all of our garments in, that are not tailored. Thank you very much for listening to the demo. Again, our interfacings are on our website, which is www.fashionpatterns.com. Thank you.